Let's take a look at the edit channel settings windows for some tips and tricks. This is one of the most commonly used windows in Cubase because we can see an overview of the selected channel of all of the processing. We can see our inserts, channel strip, EQ, our sends, our panner, and our fader. And as we go from left to right, this would basically mimic the signal flow of how the processing occurs for the channel. If we want to hide different components of the channel strip, we could go to the setup window in the upper right hand corner and we could choose to hide these different components. Or if we wanted to change where they are in the layout, we can select an element, move it up, which would move it to the right or move it to the left. And as we move down, that would move it to the right. To navigate between different channels without having to leave the channel settings window, we could use the up and down arrows. To navigate to a specific track, we could just click on the magnifying glass, type in the first couple letters, and say let's go to the pits audio. And if I hit the left arrow, we could just navigate back and forth between two commonly used tracks. We can see the name of the track and rename from within the channel settings window and also set the input and output from there. If we're working with track presets, we could load up track presets or save track presets. And if we've made like all sorts of horrible edits and to our processing and we have the track preset, we could reload the track preset like so. Many times channels will go to a group, the group to the output, and navigating between those can be problematic. So we could click on the show output chain. So now I can see that this channel is feeding into this group and this group is feeding into this stereo master output. To edit the group, I could click on the E of that group channel and now the processing is for the group or go directly to my master output if I hit my back keys, we can just navigate between those different channels like that. If we have our effect sends that are going to different effects return channels and we wanted to get to those, so let's say we're listening to our what file. Did you say? And I wanted to go to this reverb return channel. If we click on this little right arrow, we could see all of our destinations, including our effects return. And now I could choose to just EQ, just the effects return channel. What did you say? You wished it all away. If I wanted to solo the effect with the source, or if I wanted to isolate the reverb without the source, I could click on the listen button. Now, as we look at our inserts, we could have up to 16 different inserts on a particular channel. So we see that we can have this green line and this green line indicates which inserts are pre or post fader. And this is movable on each track independently. So if I move it there, I could have one pre fader insert and 15 post fader inserts and we could just move the pre and post fader line there. If we wanted to add different effects, we could just say, let's add a delay. We could, and then we see the plugin interface show up, or we could just drag and drop VST effects from the media bay. If I wanted this to be in the second insert slot, as I drag it over and place it on the second insert slot, the effect that was there previously just gets moved down and we could change the order of the processing like this. If I wanted to get rid of a plugin, I could just drag it to an empty space. Sometimes we may have a stereo track, but we want it to have a processing of the insert on only one channel. So if we go to the routing tab, when inserts are selected, we could choose mono double click and we could choose for processing to only occur on one particular channel. The channel strip 
is very powerful and mimics kind of the functionality found in the large format console. So you could have your noise gate, three different types of compression, our channel EQ, which we could see in more detail here. We could have a de-esser, which is great for vocals or an envelope shaper for transient design work, which is great for drums. We have three forms of tape saturation. We also have a maxim three maximizers. Some of the plugins like the maximizer will have little graphic user interfaces that fit within the channel strip, as well as all of the different compression plugins. To change the signal flow order within the channel strip, just drag to change the order like so. Or we could select our channel strip and change the order just that easily. If I want the channel strip to come in the signal flow before the inserts, all I would have to do is to select my channel strip here, and we'll see this little icon that says move channel strip to pre-inserts position. And then we could just toggle which comes first, either the inserts or the channel strip. It's really your choice. When we go to look at the EQ, there's lots of great EQ functionality that's available. We will see our parameters that are adjustable as sliders, but if we wanted that to be more knobs, we could click in the EQ setup window and just show the controls as knobs, or if we don't want to see the controls at all, we can hide those different elements. As we're working with our EQ, we may want to sometimes find a particular frequency that we don't like and cut that. In order to do that, we could just find that frequency, right click on EQ and just invert the EQ. So if I wanted to invert this again, we could just again, right click. If I like this particular EQ band, I could go to a different channel, activate the band and I copied it and then I could paste that EQ band to a different channel. Some of the EQ controls can also be really finely tuned using modifier keys on your computer keyboard. So if I hold down, I could freely adjust my EQ, but if I hold down my control or command key, now I can't adjust, I'm locked from adjusting the frequency as I move to left to right. If I hold down my alt or option key, I can't adjust the gain or cut of the EQ. If I hold down my shift key, I can only adjust the Q. So if you really want to kind of fine tune different elements, and as we're here, we could also, once I have the frequency dialed in, I could just use my mouse wheel to adjust my EQ like that. If we go to another channel, we could go to, and on our outer bands of EQ, we have different EQ types. So the two inner bands of the EQ will be parametric one and parametric two. On our outer bands, we can set up different shelves. So let's increase our EQ here and let's just put it to different shelves. So we could have this be a parametric band or if we say, okay, let's make it a high shelf one, there's high shelf two. So if you wanted to have like a little like decrease in, you know, to do a little bump there. So you'll have different shelving that will be accessible right here and so you have different eq types to work with one of the great things that's available is a comparison eq so let's say if we're on a particular channel and say this is maybe clashing with the piano the our vocal and piano so i'm going to go to my vst instruments and we're going to choose a different track in orange so as i play what did you I can see the say? blue frequencies I select and I'm EQing the vocal. Away. And if I select here, now I can see the frequencies of the piano. And I could EQ the piano against the voice and go back and forth. One of the really handy things with EQ is a very musical trick is if we know that we're in a key of G, for instance, I could just come over here in frequencies, say, okay, let's go to G6 and type in a note number and that will move the frequency based on the pitch that we've entered. Now within the EQ, one of the things that's a bit of an anomaly 
in this signal flow is what we have the pre section. So here we could just have a high cut filter and a low cut filter. So we could turn these on and move the slider over to the right. We could choose for these to be in different slopes. So if I say I want a 6 dB slope for my high cut and my low cut, let's make it a very steep 48 dB of cut. So as we adjust out, we could, and this will occur before the actual channel hits the inserts and all the other processing. With this, we could also adjust gain. So if we come over here to adjust the gain, or we could flip the phase or polarity of the track right there. The effect sends will allow us to not only send tracks to different destinations like groups, but to effect sends as well. So if we want this to go out to an effect and to add an effect, we could right click and just add an effect send to a particular channel. If we want a, an effect send to be pre or post fader, again, we could right click, say move to pre fader, move to post fader, or just click on this icon right here. As we're, we're sometimes working with panning of our sources, we may want the panning of the effect send to follow the panning of the actual channel. So if we go while we're in our sends, we can go to our panning and as we pan, we could activate the link panners function. So we see this little drop down menu. At this point, we could say link panners. And as I pan the channel, we could have the effect send automatically pan with it so that it's linked together. Sometimes when working with automation on particular tracks, it's also sometimes hard to find the exact area of I wanted to draw in an effect send automation for level. So to quickly do that, what we could do is say, okay, I want to go to the level. I'm going to right click here and then we could say, show the level automation track. So as we come over here, it's automatically opened up the automation track for that effect send level. Again, just by right clicking, we could just reveal that particular parameter for automation. QSense can also be accessed here. So if you're doing headphone mixes, we could adjust our levels and panning within our QSense. And another routing destination could also be accessed by going to the setup window where we could see our direct routing. So if we have multiple groups that are set up, we could have our direct routing also where we could have this going to multiple destinations. And if you don't want to see that, just come over here and go to your setup window and hide and close that. One common question I get is how can I go between different tracks and have multiple channel edit windows open? So if I come here and I open up this channel and I want to see this channel as well, instead of seeing just one window that goes back and forth, I'm going to just come over here. We could make sure that this is set to always on top by right clicking. I'll select a different channel. And as I, let's go to this channel and hold down the alt or option key. And we could have the two channels on different positions in the screen. So as you can see, you have an immense amount of power directly from one particular window with the edit channel settings window. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to hit the like button and to subscribe to the channel.